Welcome to the Questionable Garage Studio. Hi, I'm Dwayne, the editor, and Jared is not here today. Uh, he actually became a little sick uh, right before Christmas. He's doing okay, but he asked me if I would come and talk to you just a little bit and let you know that um, instead of a regular episode today, we're doing something just a little bit different, and that is that we're going to look back at 2022. There were a lot of really great things that happened on the Questionable Garage during this past year. There were some really weird and um, what some might consider bad things that happened in 2022. And there were just some rather strange things that were said and done, some of them on camera, some of them off, uh, that we'd like to share with you here in just a few moments. So. I uh, would love to get your comments on what is your favorite clip that you're about to see. But right now we're going to show you the good, the bad, and some of the um, weird, ugly things that happened on The Questionable Garage in 2022. There's Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. I'm Jared with the Technicolor Nightmare Charger. We're getting a security blink, so I don't know that it will start, but let's try. Okay, well, it's doing more than the old engine did. I think I'm gonna climb out of this. Oh. I didn't think this through. It's a cop car. The doors aren't meant to be open from here. Buy a movie card. Ugh. Fun fact, even if it's unlocked, those doors don't work. Roadblock took the brunt of the entirety of the tree. And it's gonna look like a pickup truck. Ute. Ute. It's gonna look like a ute. A ute. 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 Did you say utes? Yeah, two utes. What is a ute? Oh, excuse me, Your Honor. Two youths. Hey, look at that. Look at that. I bought Tyler's BMW. It's gonna need to be wrenched on every day. It, it, it needs a lot. Okay, now that we're just trying to drive to where you, we're gonna film, you can kind of see this car's, you know, unique driving characteristic. And that is just every once in a while, the steering wheel begins to shake so violently you feel like you might be crashing and dying. Like, 
There you go. I mean, th this is not how a car should handle, in case you're wondering. Adjust our tie rods, do a little bit more talking about what's underneath, and we still got a few more parts coming in. A thousand dollars would get him where he needs to be. <laughs> the main thing is we don't have blown apart steering stuff. We are going to be able to drive this car once we fix, you know, everything else wrong with it, but we're going to get there. Um, so more parts to wait for. A thousand dollars. The fun thing is this is kind of a background project where we work on it as we can. And we are going to talk about the thousand dollar starter toolbox. This is a Yukon tool chest from Harbor Freight. When I bought it, it was $350. I then bought just some organizers, a plier set that didn't fare too well. The ones that have these nuts for the slip joint adjustables, these go, well, they would go there, but as you can tell, just that toss it broke apart. And just some other small miscellaneous set that set us to just about a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars would get him where he needs to be. <laughs> you throw that aging stick in there, wait six to 10 days, which is honestly the hardest part about it. Get a real nice, get a real nice rich flavor and then you've got the glasses ready to go. Comes with everything you need for aging, a cheesecloth filter. These were some boxes I was real excited to get. Which ones are you going to? Demonstrate using my favorite products. Well, I'm demonstrating. Well, I was supposed to demonstrate how I like using this. And uh, I that was the one I was most excited about. <sighs> oh, that just goes on for how the day's been. <laughs> Let's talk through a couple scales of smells. Um, really high up there, I've told you guys. Don't like burnt gear oil. Some of that may be a little bit of uh, PTSD coming from that Ford Limited Slip Additive that smells terrible when you put it in, but smells even worse when you burn it up and ruin it. That's a pretty big smell. Don't like it too much. <coughs> Earl, come on now. Most people have smelled a dirty diaper. You know what that smells like. So those are, those are some level of smells you've got cars that have just been closed up baking in the sun and have just you know that musk about them that uh burns the nostrils just a little bit <coughs> then you <coughs> excuse me then you <coughs> we might have to go outside to finish this discussion of smells and their effects then you've got you know a full porta potty that's been sitting in direct sunlight for a month and you crack that door open and you break the seal. That's a strong smell. Probably the worst smell I've ever experienced was early on in mine and my wife's marriage. We opened up a equestrian boarding facility and when we initially toured it, we noticed there was a dead turkey in one of the horse stalls and they were supposed to remove the, the carcass. And we moved in four months later and four months of Georgia summer in a cooler does not a pleasant smell make of a rotting turkey carcass. That about put me on the ground. It was, it was bad, like really, really bad. Um, Earl has released a fragrance that far, far surpasses that. I have never been hit with a smell just so suddenly so I just sat in the seat and like just practice slapping where I'd just be like. Oh. What was that? Uh, great. Brakes in the rear now, those discs. That's just impressive. What 
what's really amazing to me is we're not locking up the tires. It's just grabbing incredibly hard. Those quarter windows and rear glass out, and then uh, the real fun begins, right? The dash? Yeah, the dash, it's um, got a little bit of a modified frame in there, so we'll have to figure out how that all goes. Yeah. Next time I'll close the doors, because you're mostly just a shadow. I mean, that is you, right? You're just you're just a shadow, no shadow face. You're in the corner, right? He comes out when you desperately need help. James just appears, and uh, you get stuff done. Uh, James, thank you. Until next time, we'll have him back, hopefully. And uh, we are going to throw a lot of stuff away. And then our next scene is going to be sparks flying. That's the fun. You miss the fun stuff. Oh, man. That's true. Cut our names out with the plasma cutter or something. It doesn't matter what we do in the front end. If your rear end isn't working, you're just not going to be fast. Para, come on. I'm trying to talk. Shh. S Smart Jared ordered bearings for stock connecting rods, not the eagle rods. It's a good thing it's not, you know, hot. And I'd ha it's kind of cool outside, but I can't have the doors open because we have our supervisor in today. She's working really hard, aren't you? Yeah, I got the spot air conditioner making it hot in my area just for you. She's cute, though. Just gratuitous pair of footage. And we just started day number two, and I opened my mouth saying we were going to be first international harvesters to finish, and uh, as you notice, Everyone's on the side of the road with us, and we're missing something. No, the wheel spacers didn't break. Uh, I drove the wheel off of it.
want to borrow that helmet and go for a ride? Doing a what? Do you want to borrow that helmet and go for a ride? I, I think you could, like, get short. I think there's a chance. So Dwayne gets motion sick. Uh, yeah. This editor Dwayne, if you've not seen him on one of the previous videos, also my father-in-law. Well, uh, turns out that uh, something I was a little bit worried about ended up being something we really should be worried about and has stopped the medevac in its tracks. The van that never fails to fail is failing, but we're going to fix it. It just unfortunately means we're not ending the episode with big burnouts. That's what David really wanted to do. Oh, goodness. Uh, okay. Mildly alarming now with the bucket up. Uh, I wonder if I just tilt it to get the water out. Is that this one? No. Oh, okay. There we go. It's just lots of oil coming out of this thing. So we'll get it up to where, oh, that's a squirter too, nice. Now, if you need a smoother radius or a radius that you can't quite get with one of these mandrels, if you have a smooth pipe, you can use a smooth surface to carefully bend it. So if we look at that piston, uh-oh. And these need to seal against something because if it were to seal against the aluminum, it would wear very, very quickly. And unfortunately, when they get hot, these seats can come undone and drop out. And once it starts dropping out, they break, make contact with the piston, and uh, really bad things happen. 
there's going to be a little bit more that is going to continue to happen off camera. I have taken up your last two weekends. You have uh, some things you, you need to do. You're getting out of me, Jared. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, if you haven't seen the revival getting it out of the woods and the drive over here, that is probably the most fun I've ever had with another guy in a van in my life. Uh, there were small fires. Yeah, it's turning into a campfire. Oh, you lost your travel. Ah! This is gonna stink really bad. I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices and questionable doesn't mean stupid. Those, those are two different things. So uh, put your brake bleed. Sorry, Dwayne, you're gonna jump that. So put your brake bleed. <sighs> Maybe not. So put your brake. <sighs> Can't say brake bleeders. <laughs> so put your brake bleeders on uh, the right side. So you can actually bleed the brakes. Don't, don't do with whatever that guy did. See ya.